This is Eddie Muller, welcoming you once again to Noir Alley. How are you today? Down in the dumps? State of the world gnawing away at you? You just need a break from the damned seriousness of it all? Well, I got just the remedy. A movie that is 100% pure, undiluted trash. In the best possible way, of course. Here in Noir Alley, whatever ails you, the cure is a wicked woman. United Artists released this low-rent firecracker in 1954, and they were not coy about what was being sold. Taglines crammed on the posters declared, She was trouble, every voluptuous inch of her. They called her wicked, but they didn't know the half of it. And my favorite, she uses sex the way a hoodlum uses a loaded gun. Well, the purveyors of this pulpy passion play did have pedigree. Eddie Small was one of the most prominent independent producers in the business. He'd recently made the terrific noirs Scandal Sheet, Kansas City Confidential, and 99 River Street. And at the helm was the team of Clarence Green and Russell Rouse. The guys who wrote the classic DOA back in 1949 had just produced a pair of hard-hitting and innovative films, The Well in 1951 and The Thief the following year, a spy thriller in which not a word is spoken. For this one, they shelved any fresh ideas. This is a tawdry reworking of The Postman Always Rings Twice with a few new sexy twists thrown in to ensure it would make money. The tallest twist is the star, statuesque Beverly Michaels, the kid from New York City who seemed a lot taller than the five feet nine inches she was listed at, has been modeling since she was a child and was a chorus girl in both New York and Havana. Moving to Hollywood, her rangy frame and big eyes landed her a plum part in Mervyn Leroy's star-studded 1949 soap opera, East Side, West Side. Leroy was the guy who had discovered Lana Turner, and maybe he thought lightning would strike twice. In her first on-screen role, Michaels murders Ava Gardner and gets in a fist fight with Van Heflin. Not a bad way to start. Her next film was something else entirely. Czech expat Hugo Haas cast her as the lead in 1951's Pickup. Haas was an actor, writer, and director, a true auteur of B-movie exploitation. A bargain basement version of Joseph von Sternberg, Haas essentially remade the Blue Angel multiple times in the 1950s, always casting himself in the role of the hapless schmuck destroyed by a ruthless femme fatale. In Pickup and The Girl on the Bridge, also released in 51, Beverly Michaels was his dime store Dietrich. She then caught the attention of Green and Rouse, who had decided to briefly shelve their high-mindedness to make a down-and-dirty drama in the spirit of James M. Kane. The character of hard-luck dame Billy Nash is even dressed to resemble Lana Turner in the 1946 version of Kane's The Postman Always Rings Twice. Only in this case, she is the vagabond, living hand-to-mouth, who saunters into a small-town saloon and seduces the proprietor into bilking his wife out of the business they co-own. Richard Egan is the square-jawed, broad-shouldered sap who is putty in her hands. But this predictable plot has a major surprise. The character of Charlie Borg, another guy whose libido goes into overdrive at the merest glimpse of Billy Nash. The sordid twist is that Charlie is played by Percy Helton, Dark City's hermetic homunculus. Here, Helton actually gets to make a play for the leading lady, which is every bit as queasy as you might imagine. This was the biggest role in Helton's career. He's actually third build. I've heard from folks who knew Percy that this was his favorite among all the movies he made. He even had a Wicked Woman three-sheet framed on his living room wall, something his wife did not appreciate at all. And you'll see why soon enough. Clarence Green and Russell Rouse were a writing team that was known for putting smart spins on stories pulled from the headlines. Strong pictures like The Well about racial unrest and The Thief about Cold War paranoia. Here they decided to let loose a little bit and wallow in the seaminess of a sex-charged pot boiler. Sometimes you just don't want anything more. The film was originally titled Free and Easy 
but a late title change led to the creation of a theme song that is truly unforgettable, unfortunately. Here is Long Tall Beverly Michaels, starring in Wicked Woman. 